What's up guys, this is Brett here from brettdev.com coming at you once again from Chiang Mai in Thailand and today I'm joined with Evan and Evan, Evan I've known for a little while um, I met him about a year ago when I did a video in this exact same location with Chris and um, Evan's been in Chiang Mai for how long now? Um, off and on like three years so I don't really live here like full time but I always find myself coming back. Okay. So Evan, you're originally from the US? Yeah, I'm from US, from Colorado. Okay. And Evan basically travels around, uh, do, you, do you leave Asia or do you just travel around Asia mostly? Or? For now I'm doing that slow travel through Asia, man. Okay. So he's been in Asia for three years and Evan is a full-time copywriter, like that's your gig, right? Yes. Okay. So I thought it'd be in interesting to bring Evan onto the channel today. Uh, I've got lots of videos about freelancing. You guys that are watching want to get into freelancing and copywriting comes up a lot and very frequently on the channel. So I'm not a great copywriter. I was just saying to Evan before we started this video, I actually suck at copywriting. Like I try my best at it. Um, so I thought well, that's something that we could talk about today and perhaps talk about how you get your clients mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So we'll start with like, how did you originally get into copywriting? Like how did you um, decide that was going to be your gig? Did you, did you do it before you started traveling or did you travel and become a copywriter? Yeah, well, I started with e-commerce, so I was doing drop shipping, and then I moved into FBA and stuff. So, really, like, I started business writing to sell. You know, I had to write to sell, um, but my results never really came in before I learned how to write to sell. So, I was learning how to write and how to write the words that actually bought, you know, brought customers and revenue and profit into my pockets and into my business. Um, so, before that, it was like not necessary skill for me. But then, you know, I I found out how viable it could really be if I got good at it. Right. And um, honestly, like I was doing a few projects and then things kind of fizzled out for me. You know, it's like the entrepreneur up and down thing. And I was in a kind of a low spot. I really had a, um, I was running out of funds and I was kind of getting a little bit antsy and nervous, you know, because like you got to pay the VC, you got to stay in the country, you got to yeah. do your thing. And um, that was kind of where from that pain and frustration of trying to figure out how to make the business run, I was like, I just need money now mm -hmm. and I need to do like some consulting work or some client work that would get me money based on the skill that I've already developed. So I thought, all right, what am I good at? And um, I was like, all right, well, I'm good at writing copy, good at like branded design, and I could probably roll those two things in for clients. Mm -hmm. um, so literally I started off, even just a long time ago, I started off with Upwork. Right. So I'm not really on Upwork anymore, but I was I started there yep. trying to get clients because I needed the money at that time. That was probably like a year and a half ago. Okay. And um, that's really what able, what enabled me to get to the, like get the ball rolling a little bit and right. realize, oh, well, I can actually make a lot of money doing this and really make this a full time thing. So okay, and is it is something you enjoy, right? I'm, I'm I'm assuming. Yeah, I love it, dude. Right. So you didn't have you said you did um drop shipping. Um, did you say you did FBA as well? I did FBA. Yeah, I did drop shipping okay. FBA. I started with drop shipping, and then it was like, you know, I made that store, and I was able to sell the store, and then I took enough money to invest in my products and stuff like that. Right. Okay. And you said you started um on Upwork. Mm -hmm. I actually recommend people do that to kind of like kickstart. Uh, and get the get the first few clients under their belt and stuff like that. Um, how long were you on Upwork? How did you find it getting clients as a copywriter? Was it difficult? Um, what challenges did you have when you were on there? Um, I had a lot of challenges, to be mm -hmm. honest. That was probably one of the hardest points of my entrepreneurial journey so far. Right. Um, mainly, like a few things is like, I'm kind of a stubborn mm -hmm. hard head, so like, it takes me a while to learn a lesson. So I guess like I was coming into the market trying to be highly valued, high service provider, high price. Mm -hmm. um, and then like the thing on Upwork is like you really have to have that track record. And if you don't, then it's kind of like they can see your work from behind. And if they don't, if you don't have any work, you could even be like one of the best known copywriters in the world, but they don't see it on Upwork. So they don't pay you that respect. So I came in at like, okay, well, I have a skill. I know it's worth money. I get like, the high pricing and the psychology. I knew that was important. And then it just like, I was stubborn. So it just like, I was not willing to lower my price or like come down right. or whatever. So um, actually the first client that I landed was like $500, which again is small money, but like I was able to do that first because I did find a high quality client. But then there was just this huge gap from that afterwards, you know? And then I realized, okay, I gotta drop my price. I gotta actually start even, you know, whatever, be humble, come back yeah. down to the ground and just be like, all right, screw it. Whatever works and gets results, I'm gonna do that because I was just so frustrated of like not getting any clients because nobody pays you attention if you're not going to do that, you know. So yeah. And how how did you um did you find that you had to keep your prices? Because a bit of a misconception on that. What you have to keep your prices low all the time to compete. 
Um, what I've found is once you build up your feedback, then you can start putting the prices higher. I don't know if you found the same. Or... Yeah, totally. I mean, like my price was originally I went into the market as a newbie at fifty dollars an hour, right? And I landed my first client there at fifty dollars an hour for the five hundred dollar project, just like fixed fee. I don't really like hourly because you know whatever selling your time and all that, but like the fixed fee was all right for me. But then after after that, like I said, it was kind of hard, so I just dropped it and it was able. Um, I was able to. I don't know, like like you said, you shouldn't keep it low all the time, but I was able to keep clients like getting a little bit of a ball rolling. And uh, once you get the actual track record, you need to be able to increase your price and people will definitely pay it because you. it's weird. Like like I said, you could have the track record offline and you could show the potential clients, but the fact is you're not going to get the bite from the clients. That's correct. Yeah. Like before you even do it, if you don't have a track record. So yeah, that was a hard lesson for me to learn. Like I said, I'm stubborn. Like I really am a hard head. Yeah. Like whatever I do, <laughs> I try to make it work working on softening that up but man like that was a real struggle for me at that time so yeah that's my advice for that for I, sure I, I find the real issue with Upwork is when you apply for a job and there are so many other people applying for that position um, what many people don't do is actually look at Upwork from the perspective of somebody hiring Probably. and once you actually take a look at that you can see um, like put yourself in the mind of the person that you want to be hiring you and all they kind of see is a list of names feedback scores and opening opening um, sentence yeah Right, so unless you have a good feedback score, you're pretty much going to get dismissed. Yeah, you um, really got to get creative. Like it's it's basic like marketing avatar psychology. Like, okay, who am I trying to sell to? But of course, if you're brand new and Upwork, and you're really just trying to sell your first skill and all that, like you don't a you don't know any of that stuff for the marketing world. Yeah. B, you really don't deserve the money yet because right. you don't have a track record and you don't have the skills down. Or you haven't actually worked with the clients. Yeah. Like you don't deserve the money. You might think like you know I came in and I was like I deserve this whatever. And it's like. That mindset will get you killed in entrepreneurship. Yeah, that's true. So you really true. are brand new. So you got to be humble and be like, all right, I'm going to build the skill with some people and you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have like late deadlines or something's going to happen where you're just going to screw something up. Yeah. You don't want to be screwing it up for a huge time client if you accidentally, you know, it's kind of like if you earn yeah. certain big chunks of money and you're not ready for it, like lottery winners, you're going to lose all of it and you'll be worse off. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Like, so you got to learn to crawl before you can walk, basically. Totally, like, totally. It's a good lesson to learn if anybody is like getting into freelancing and especially looking to go on at work for the first time and stuff yeah. it's like you can't just um go in there expecting huge amounts and no. you have to you don't des it's like you don't deserve anything yeah. at, the, at the start like especially if you're brand new in business just like yeah. stop like you yeah, don't yeah. deserve anything at all yet just be humble and then work your way up you really have to start somewhere don't yeah. and don't be afraid to be seen at the bottom or whatever like, yeah 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 so you said that you're not on upwork anymore right mm -hmm. so do you ever use it or how did you transition um because like myself, I'm, I'm pretty much in a similar position as you. Like I, but I just do something different. I do web development, you do copywriting, but we kind of do the same sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I started on Upwork a little bit, got some clients on there, and then pretty much I just found that the more and more clients I built up, I just kept a relationship with them, and then we slowly just didn't really need to go back yeah. to Upwork. I mean, how, how did it work for you? Yeah, um, I personally, like... I don't want to say anything against the rules or whatever because people get in trouble and people whatever. Can read like, between the lines. Yeah. yeah, totally. But like, I really don't like anyone in the middle of my money. So mm -hmm. like, if I'm trying to get money from someone and I'm trying to provide the valuable service and it's an exchange, like it's an A to B thing. Mm -hmm. I don't need unless and you know unless you don't know how to get leads, which you don't when you're first starting out. Yeah. You, then you don't need a middleman, dude. Yeah. So like, I don't really prefer to have that. Like, I'd rather have someone have a hot lead on the phone and be able to close them there, and then they pay yeah. me through my site. Yeah, immediately, and it's just like done deal, boom. But if you're new, you can't get, you don't know how to get leads yet. Yeah. So it is a good place to get the leads, but um, mm -hmm. there's so there's that with the money in the middleman and not. But there's also um, the fact of like a lot of the clients on Upwork are lower quality in general. So a lot of people on Upwork are are you know kind of looking for the cheap work. So like if you can be getting the track record or if you find out you can carve a niche out of Upwork, that's great. But a lot of people really just want to price shop and it's yeah. a buyer's market. So it's totally uh, skewed in the favor of the of the client. Sure. And they know that because they're obviously taking more fees out of the person working. Yeah. And they're also making it easy to find people. And it's obviously anyone applies to your job. Yeah. So when there are all these people applying to your job, you re you're reduced to a commodity. So yeah. you can compete, but you really got got to get creative. You got to know your stuff. So yeah. otherwise, you will lose. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you definitely have to use Upwork as part of a larger strategy. Yeah, um, I think you'll go crazy if you just only focus on Upwork and got all of your work on there and never left the platform or got any clients from anywhere else. Totally. You would um, just burn yourself out yeah. pretty much. I don't know how people do it like long term.
Yeah. Um, but it's, 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 it, I think it does, it is beneficial, especially if you're just getting started. Um, what other um, methods do you use for lead generation and how do you go about picking up copywriting clients outside of Upwork? Is there any other tips you could give people that are watching? <clears throat> so to me, up until this point, really it's been like almost 100% organic. Like I haven't used uh, paid ads, I hadn't need to, although right now I'm working on building some funnels. But before that, it was literally just like add value to a specific group organically somewhere on the net. Right. Okay. So forums, Facebook groups, um, any any other like Instagram or Slack groups or whatever that you can kind of find that people are doing certain things. Right. Um, like you want to make sure that there's the exact target audience which you predefined and you go find that person, that customer avatar who you're looking to serve. Uh -huh. Add them value for free. Yeah, and then people will like and engage and stuff and whatnot. I did it yeah. personally through Facebook, organic. Right. You can do, um, like I said, you could do Slack. You could do forums. Forums are a great way to get in touch. Right. Um, especially when you don't have the budget to like buy your leads or whatever. Yeah. So now I'm yeah. buying the leads like from my funnels because I have the money. But yeah. before I didn't. So yeah. I'd be like, all right, well, how am I going to get money with no money? You can make money with no money. You can right. definitely do it. Yeah. So you just got to get creative. So for me, it's been almost 100% uh, Facebook organic. Right. So I add a literally add value to um, a specific person. Like a, my target ad, uh, audience is like someone who's in the e-commerce business. They're usually doing like drop shipping or FBA. Okay. Um, they're wanting to do like bigger, bigger scale projects right. and they're making anywhere from like one to 5K and they want to text like 10X that. Right, okay. And so I go to those people and it's like provide a back end, provide the emails, um, provide the lead gen, you know, whatever they're doing on their funnels. I write the copy for the pieces that they need. Right. And those people, if I can get those people on a group, I don't need to create that group. I just go find it and add value. Don't pump your stuff. Don't right. link to all your crap. Yeah. Just add genuine value and shut up. Yeah. And then if they like your stuff, you can engage and you can add them and start talking to them and like just have a conversation with them. Yeah. That's really interesting actually because when you um, talk about going into Facebook groups, um, so so what you what you're what you're basically saying is if you're a copywriter. And you want to write for an e-commerce market, then you don't need to be joining Facebook groups for copywriters. You need to yeah. be joining groups for e-commerce. You're not trying to teach other people how to write copy, or I'm not. Yeah. Some people are. Yeah. I mean, I am doing a little bit of that where I'm giving like lead magnets away for the copywriting book, or like a little bit of like training and videos and series. Yeah. People want to learn how to write copy, but it's more of a bigger strategy to educate my market. Yeah. Okay. So Showcase your expertise. Yeah. And stuff there's like a difference. That. But yeah, I mean, I mean, you're going to find it a lot less competitive adding value to a e-commerce group when perhaps maybe you you're one of only a few copywriters that are hanging out in that group, right? And everyone's going to look to you for their copy, right? Yeah, if you go into these groups and you are a service provider, a premium service provider, you're basically just going to say like, let's say it's a group of your target audiences. So maybe it's the e-commerce guys for a specific like, you know, drop shipping from Alibaba or whatever, or AliExpress. Those type of people you want to serve, or someone who is like learning copy, you want to like. You know, that's who you're trying to educate and who you're trying to land as clients and who to get as customers eventually, right? So you would just say like if they're posting, a lot of people post up copy critiques or landing pages or whatever. And if you're coming in with your specific skill, maybe they don't even think about that. So you say something about like, oh, your web development has this error right here and that's why this box is showing up randomly or something like that. If you're the, you know, you're like what bread does. Or if you're a branding and, uh, you know, consulting es expert for graphic design, you're gonna say, you know, the logo and the colors and the scheme is really communicating something that's totally different than what you're trying to or what you're saying you're communicating or whatever. Um, and if you're a copywriter, you're gonna say like, okay, well, this is like, this is, you know, you don't have a call to action here or like your your or your targeting is off because you're speaking about like startups to people who are actually agencies already, something like that or whatever. And you give a few tips for how you can fix it, and you just give it totally for free, and you just say, hey, that's from John, from Jim, from Tom, whatever. Have a nice day. You don't say anything about like contact me later. Like if you want to message me, whatever. Hopefully you can give me some money later. Right. Or it's like <laughs> none of that. Just literally say, here's free stuff and free value that'll help you in your business. Bye. And then a lot of people will like your comments, share your stuff. They will add you. They will come to message you later because they want to know like, hey, what do you think about this now? Like, I can't tell you how many times I've done that and people come back to me and say like, hey, right. can you take a look again? They revise it yeah, and then of course. Come back. Okay. And then they want to hit you up again and say, you know, and then that's a perfect time to set up a little 10 minute conversation. Yeah. And see if they're right for the fit. And then, you know, you might be, maybe become a client that and way. Like you say, in that situation where you're on Facebook, you're not in like a, um, how did you refer to it? Upwork buyer's market. You're not in a buyer's market. Yeah. You're it's you're it's not a commodity. One, you're dealing one on one with an individual yeah, totally. and they're not comparing you against others because yeah. you are the only one that's doing that. You're yeah. the only one that's giving away that value at the yeah. time. 
all business is one to one. It's really all business is another person to another person. Even B2B, everyone thinks it's all hidden behind these layers and corporate you know, strategy and, and uh, protection and lo legal stuff. It is that, but it's literally, you're trying to get to the one person. So yeah. you can get to the person who's the decision maker. I can't tell you how many times that I've done that and just been able to get whatever I'm trying to do across clearly. And then there, yeah, I mean, people need help with their business and a lot of people are doing well already and they want to optimize and they have the money to invest. Yeah. If you're there and they're there and they need that and you, you know, yeah. Yeah. That's great advice, man. That's great advice. Um, so what would you say to people that are perhaps um, thinking about becoming copywriters? Because I, again, I spoke to you about this before we started the, the recording and um, a lot of people do think copywriting isn't one of the easier things to get into. I would actually argue and say, you, it's a, I, 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 I feel like, um, maybe because I'm so inexperienced with it, but I feel like copywriting is probably, it's harder to learn copywriting in some aspects to get really, really good at it as it is to learn basic code. Mm. Um, because if you can if you can learn to, the basics of, of programming, um, it's kind of it's there right in front of you in black and white. Copywriting is a little bit more creative, mm. right? Um, so I mean, what would you say to people that are looking to get into it? Where's a good starting point? Yeah, so there's a lot of tangents that I could go down with this one, but um, honestly, like just to build off the point you said is like it's easy to get in. That's true. Um, it's not easy to just get in and be really good. Yeah. So like, honestly, a lot of people are copywriters or whatever, but they don't have like a specific target market or a niche or they don't know what they do. Like the whole term copywriting is super broad. So we got to uh, differentiate copywriting, W-R-I-T-E and R-I-G-H-T. That has nothing to do with each other. So R-I-G-H-T would be like legal documents and copywriting and like right. the legal yeah. pol uh, privacy policy, uh, sorry, disclaimer, stuff like that. Copywriting is sales copywriting, direct response marketing. Mm -hmm. That's a certain way that goes back about 100 years into the industry. Um, so for me to get into copywriting, if I was brand new again, if I was going to do it all again, I would literally do the same thing I did, which was go research the actual industry foundation. So yeah. there's people like David Ogilvy, Claude Hopkins, um, Eugene Schwartz, like Albert, Albert Lasker, uh, Raymond Rubicum. These are the people who built this industry. Um, started in the UK actually and then it brought right. over to uh, New York okay. and so these agencies started popping up in like 1915 1920 these are the really early guys right and this is where the fundamental start for direct response because too many people are doing like brand awareness or some slogan or some ad that doesn't yeah. do anything the yeah. ads don't pull there's no way to, to track the ad that has no key, uh, KPI so there's no way to return your investment or actually even prove that you're getting a return on investment yeah. by your cute little like branding ads that looks nice and it doesn't do anything. Yeah. So that's where they start doing direct response. So really I would go back there, learn that, study that, read those guys' books, right. and then go find the ads that were running in there. Like David Ogilvy did tens and tens of ads that did hundreds of millions of dollars in that time frame, which is really impressive. So I would find his like um, his Rolls Royce ad. Um, he has a bunch of different ads that come through shine through direct responses like classics right and it's the same with claude hopkins he wrote scientific advertising and breakthrough advertising those are the two books if you can get their hand on them um scientific is really easy breakthrough is like a thousand dollars or something so if you can find like a pdf or find it on amazon right. or something definitely go find that those are the two books that i would start breakthrough and scientific advertising both of those okay read both of those to a t understand the fundamentals of the roots of direct response marketing and then you're going to actually get this broad view and then you'll be able to understand where you can pick your niche. You know, like I fell into e-commerce. I have the e-commerce background. So I do like not just copywriting, but copywriting, consulting, the e-commerce. Like I'm helping clients boost their conversion rate, help right. their positioning, their target market, their funnels, yeah. consulting with the conversion rate optimization calls. Right. Like there's a whole, that's why I sell like a whole package and it's expensive, you know, because right. it's very inclusive. Uh -huh. So really like if you fall in a very general idea, and then you start handwriting those sales letters. That's a huge key. Right. It's like handwriting the sales letters on a notebook and pad and writing the Rolls Royce ad like by your hand, by your hand. Okay. And you start learning from Gary Halbert. Like those are the people who built this industry. Gary Halbert's the, the highest paid copywriter on earth to right. date. Okay. And um, so I would go find all his hel uh, all his sales letters, GaryHalbertLetter.com, read his books, um, go you know join those groups and understand those things and write those out with a pencil and pad. And you'll really get them into your nerves and into your synapses and in your yeah. brain. Your, your yeah. neurons will fire in a different way and learning how they wrote and how they sell yeah. to another person. I, I heard about a course, um, a friend was talking about a course got about a, year, a year ago. And it was like the same principle, right? Copy hour, yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't do copy hour, but I wrote my own thing because I literally, copy hour is great. You can do one a day. It's right. a lot of work. So if you have to really be committed for like a month, it's a really great course. Um, Derek. 
Johansson or something like that. Right. Um, yeah, good stuff. He's a good copywriter himself as well. He has his group on Facebook. Um, but the thing is, is that I just literally pulled everything from everywhere, like right. even more, even more expensive than copy hour. Right. So it's like, I wanted to just get all of that. And I was, I was insane. I have books full of all of that. Yeah, you're like a crazy reader. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm a crazy so, reader. I'm kind of like an extremist. <laughs> Evan does have a YouTube channel as well. And yeah. all of these books that he's telling me about and all this good information, um, from what I've seen from your channel, you're basically reading these books and you're condensing the information, taking the most valuable lessons from them. And that's what you're sharing on your channel, right? Yeah. And on top of that, I try to imply, apply it as my best, um, my best actions that I can do. So I basically, I don't want to give people, like I never talk about things that I don't know about. Right. So if I'm convincing and if I'm like really on point with something, it's because I've actually, I know it, I've, I've studied it and I've done it. Right. So I, and if I don't know something, I'll say I don't know. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, for me, like I try to read the book, use the book, condense the knowledge and then apply it. And then that's what I share. Right. Because otherwise, like applied knowledge, if it's not applied, it's useless. Right. Like theory is great. That's what you learn in school. But I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm a college dropout. Right. That's part of my yeah. story. Like, so it's like, I, yeah. you know, yeah, I'd rather apply the knowledge and then share that. So. Yeah. So it's a great channel, guys. So for those of you that are looking to get into freelancing, that are looking to get into copyright in particular, in particular, check out Evan's channel because he's got a ton of videos and information is really amazing on there. Okay. Um, <laughs> think, is there anything else you want to cover? Yeah. I mean, um, the thing is, is like, I want to cover a difference between freelancing and consulting. Okay. So I think that like freelancing is one of those things where a lot of people think it's like selling your time and you get kind of one of those things where you sell the time for the money like hourly, but like consulting is a different way that you can really add a lot of profits to your bottom line and step up as a person as, right. as you grow. Because like, I don't technically per se do like freelancing. I just do consulting and copywriting. So, um, I think the fine line is like there's, there's done for you. And then there's teaching you. And right. I think the fine line is in the middle where it's like done a little bit of done for you, a little bit of show me how to do it. Right. So that's kind of what I do. So like if I do an autoresponder for a client, it's like 20, 20 emails or whatever, and I'm segmenting three lists. That's like I do that work. But then I tell them why I did it and how I did the certain angles. I'll break down each line by line, the psychology behind it. You know, like our psychology goes back 200,000 years to Homo sapiens. Like we've been Homo sapiens for 200,000 years. And even before that, it was Homo erectus, Neanderthal, all these different species. And we were able to, like, nothing has changed in that 200,000 years. Like the cognitive revolution came along, the agricultural revolution came along. These things changed us as human beings, but our desires are the same. Our tendencies, our biases are very the same. And we're all similar in the same Homo sapiens. Everyone on earth right now is a Homo sapiens, you know. So we all have those desires and the needs. And when you get deep on those with copy and with this marketing and psychology, you understand, like, why people do what they do and kind of see it behind the blinders of people, human psychology and, and sociology yeah. and the interaction between each other. Um, so if you're offering like all that as packages to your clients, you're not a freelancer anymore. You're really like a consultant. Yeah. You're like a teacher. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. So like in that way, you're offering something so valuable and so in depth and you're also doing a little bit of for them and you're showing them also how to do it. So that combination is like a beautiful thing where it's really like, it's much higher level and you can charge a lot more and it gets a lot more difference. Like I don't really do one off jobs anymore, you know? So if someone says like, can you write like one product description for me or something? That's like, no, that's a waste of my time. Right. I really want to take someone under my wing okay. and teach them and train them for like two months. Mm -hmm. You know, they pay me my fee up front and then I'll train them for the next two or three months. Right. And they'll be able to work on their business, their life, their, uh, their mindset, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I go really like in depth with that, even like outside the business world for a self development and mindset to like get them results in their business. Okay. So I'd rather do that and make way more of a change, you know, like yeah. a recent client of mine, he literally was doing like 0.6 conversion rate on his e-commerce store. Like that was his right. best to date. Right. And we shot it up over the last couple of months that we're not even done with the program, but like 2.17%. Wow. It's like a 1600% increase and like 80% wow. increase from the sales of last month. Wow. So like that type of thing, it's because I got him into like meditation, right. mindset. We're talking yeah. also about sales funnel, bigger picture, positioning strategy. So that's what I think is a consulting idea. And that's like really more valuable for the win-win for everybody. Right. Yeah. And how did you do that? How did you go from, it's, it's similar, similar in a sense with web as well. Like, um, you know, those clients that just want you to build a website for them the cheapest rate possible. Um, and they don't care about you optimizing it for SEO and stuff. You, they're kind of setting themselves up for failure. Totally. You, don't want, you want to turn those clients away. But how, how do you go from taking a client like that, for example, who I, I know you said I like, don't go for the cheap clients, obviously. But um, how did you go from um, freelancer to consultant? Like, how did you make that transition? How did you 
um, kind of sell that to the client? How did you, if a client thinks they need like um, improved copywriting, how do you tell them you don't just need that, you need this and now you and then you got to get them to pay you. How do you do that? So there's a big process on that. Like with the fundamentals of it and like seasoned vet entrepreneurs will know this, but like newbie gains, they don't understand this. So the two things always come back to sales and marketing. Literally, that's the two things you're always doing one or the other and you have to know both as an entrepreneur. So the marketing is like getting that type of person and qualifying them and the sales is like what you do on the phone. Right. So like I learned a lot about phone skills from a lot of people like Sam Ovens and Frank Kern, uh, Grant Cardone, like Tom Hopkins, Brian Tracy, all the old guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like whatever I do is I really try to go to the richest, most root, most rooted fundamentals of an industry or a, a skill set that I'm trying to learn. Right. So I'm really trying to go back all the way to the sales mindset of who created the game. Like sales has been around forever, but who really started like being the authority in the niche and like, you know, who is now, who's popping right now, who, you know, who has the good content and learn from a few really targeted people who are way above you, right. where you can get a lot of value from. So to answer your question about the sales part of it, the sales part, one thing is the biggest thing is qualifying. So that's how you get the right person for marketing. Yeah. But the sales part is like you get them on the phone and you don't try to tell them, you don't try to show them, you don't literally do that, you listen. Do a reflective listen and you close them based on what they need and what they want yeah so you don't it's a really like people buy emotionally and they justify logically right. and that's it like they, there's no logical sales you need logical stuff in your copy and in your video sales letters and your emails but you mostly are trying to do the emotional thing because people are emotional and like you know iffy you know they're very up in the air and things like that they're yeah. you know you need to be able to move them into the direction that would get them help so the thing is is like when you start learning the back-end psychology of people, the evolutionary psychology, you know, the biochemistry, like even drives that are, you know, things about the free will, things that are like not even, uh, not even known or conscious to them. You have to really start using this with a, a fine line of ethics. And that's what I always talk about. It's like, you could really persuade people to be the wrong way if you're, if you're not selling something valuable. So you have to know that you already kind of have something valuable and you have to have more experience than the average newbie. So it's not really to like the new person getting into this, you know, start on Upwork, definitely like get your jobs a little bit or somewhere else get your chops and then be able to have clients and then be able to kind of work your way up to it. Like this is the whole process, right? Yeah, that, that's what I kind of mentioned. Like um, people think copywriting is easy to get into. And like you say, you can get it, it's easy to enter and get started. But to get really good at it, it's really deep psychology. It's a lot of learning involved. Yeah. But when, when you are good at it, like Evan is, you can charge really good money. So and it can be a really, um, you can make you can make a ton of money doing it. So yeah. like you say, you, you're directly affecting um, people's sales with your copy at the end exactly. of the day. So. And the thing is, like I said, is it's like the more, it's more than just the copy. Like to, you can get good, but you can get, to get really good at to make the words actually get the numbers come in. Yeah. Then that's a struggle. That's like, a, that's a long journey. So you're going to have to work at it, practice at it. Um, but as far as, you know, that's kind of like the marketing side. As far as the sales calls and the sales side, if you're going to get someone on the phone, again, you want to learn from these people and you want to listen. Like two thirds of your call should be them telling you what their situation is. You want to learn, you want to ask probing questions, you want to do like a reflective listen, you want to make sure that you are really hearing them out because then they feel understood and they open with you and you establish rapport before you even talk business. And then you want to be able to get all the information that they're having in their life because they might be struggling with a mortgage and two cars and a new divorce and their business is fledgling and whatever and they're making a certain amount of money but you know you could help them because they're the right person. You've already qualified them before you talk to them. And they're dealing with all this emotional stuff, the stress, you know, the volatile like nature of, of life, you know, things yeah, happen. Yeah. So that's the stuff that you're going to be using. Like, okay, I'm helping you solve a problem. And that's how you recognize, to, you know, that you need to say that on the phone and you need to like sell that, sell that back or whatever. You know, it's not yeah. really, it's not a whole lot of pushing it in your face. It's like yeah. getting people to knock them off the edge to, for their own good. And so, you know, you can help them yeah. and they can really benefit a lot from that. That you're going to have to use some of that emotional stuff that they're dealing with, you know, because yeah. everybody has their stuff. Everybody's got their baggage and people have stuff in their life that's outside of business. So you got to talk about that. Some people want to see their mom more. Some people want to, their mom is sick. Um, some people are wanting to like travel more and get more free time out of their own business. That's like eating them up, you know, like, yeah, it's really, you've got to listen and adapt the situation. And then that, and then when you get to the close, you'll be able to use a lot of that information, yeah. um, balance a sweet spot and a line between juggling logic and uh, emotion. Mm -hmm and be able to close that person on really committing to give you the money that they need to invest to um, qualify your time 
Yeah. And you're going to be able to actually give that person results because they're they're looking it to you to solve their problem. You're really going to help them with that. And you coach them right there and then on the phone, yeah? Yeah, 100%. Okay, cool. Like it's literally, if I, when it rolls around to the close and I'm able to overcome all the objections and they say, cool, yeah, I'm in, let's do it. Yeah. Um, then I say, okay, cool. Like while we're on it, we're going to share the screen, go ahead and navigate to my custom client gateway. Okay, they were there. And as soon as that goes through, we're like, cool, congratulations. I send them the welcome letter, right. send them the signature and be able to like sign the contract. And then we're in, we're off to the races. Perfect. That's great information, man. For real. Um, I think we'll wrap it up there, guys. But um, if you like this video, um, we, I think we could do another two or three videos of everyone on the channel. Yeah, because you've got so much good information to share. Um, and how, how can people find out about you? They, uh, we've already mentioned your YouTube channel. Is there a website, blog, or anything they can go to? Or? Yeah, so you can go to motiveinmotion.com. Motive, I-N, motion.com. Also, uh, YouTube, the channel is youtube.com backslash C, backslash C. Or sorry, it's like the backslash C and backslash. You could yeah, put yeah. a link and then motive in motion. Sometimes you could do motive in motion, whatever. But, you know, LinkedIn kind of does the same thing where they slice their backslashes yeah, in there yeah, and whatever. Yeah. So there's like a double backslash C and then the motive in motion is after that. You could also try youtube.com backslash motive in motion. Um, yeah, I mean, on my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you can find me. It's, you know, we'll link to everything. So, okay, I'll put a link in the description. And um, like I said, guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up so we know. Um, leave your comments below. If you have any questions for Evan, I'm sure he can jump on the comments and I'll, I can pass them on or whatever. And don't forget to check out his channel. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming on. Yeah, man. And one more thing is that if you're really interested in learning copy, especially if you're doing it into e commerce and you really want to apply that, um, I've put out a free ebook that talks about my journey where I was in Saigon with $100, you know, we just talked about that, like I was literally had 100 bucks in the bank, trying to make it work. to that up in the corner. Yeah, I go through all of that and basically how I use copy to save my ass and how I was able to get out of that, how I, I actually give you the product description template that you can use for your own store, a lot of the psychology, the back end that you're learning to um, apply to your own market. So you check that out, it's for free, you know, I'll just send it to you, so. Awesome, all right, well thanks very much. And um, until next time guys, this is Brett from brettdev.com and we're out. Thanks for watching. If you like that video and you want to see more, click the link here to watch the next one. And also, if you're interested in how I've been able to stay in Thailand for the past three years, don't forget to check out my website where you can sign up to my free four-week freelancing course and I'll show you exactly how I've done it.